Well, hi, everybody. It's the Week in the Tackle podcast, our Friday edition. Week in the Tackle predicts the weekend, where we look ahead to the forthcoming weekend and predict what's going to happen in a couple of key areas. I'm Tom Rennie. Great to be with you as ever on this Top 50 podcast across the USA. We're also very popular, it seems, in both Russia and Switzerland. Mm. We're up in the Top 100 soccer podcast. I, I, I don't know, but um, what's the language? Uh, Melsi? I think I can speak that one. Um, alongside me for this game is a man that speaks many a language, uh, but we keep him here speaking English slash American because the other language he speaks is fluent swearing. It is Mr. Brian Dunny Apple Dunseth. How are you, mate? You're right. Renny, I do do a good curse. I do do a good curse. And and I love how you're like, how are you doing, mate? No one cares. No one cares how I'm doing. I do. Just, I, I'm tired, Renny. I'm tired. Had a late night, but I'm here and I'm excited. And uh, let's see how many F-bombs we can drop to say sorry, Tim, throughout the course of this it's fun little afternoon we're about to have. I do sort of think that we should maybe stop with the F-bombs as frequently as we... Uh... Oh, where's the fun in that? But he is so busy, Tim. Oh. He's so busy. He's actually going on a four-day weekend. So he's very busy. <laughs> yeah, very busy. Very busy man. You know, there's holidays to go on, boats to row, women to see, drinks to drink. So, you know, he's a very busy man. So mm. he doesn't like it, when we? King swear. Sorry, Tim. Um, let's get to uh, one or two stories uh, for the forthcoming weekend. It hasn't got to just be Premier League. There's, there's loads of stories. In fact, no, before we do that, let me just mention this. Um, we are going to do a couple more shows. So the season's coming to an end. Dunny's going on holiday. I'm going on holiday. But we are going to do on the Week in the Tackle podcast before we resume for the new European season uh, and internationals and whatnot in July is that we're going to do some shows that are question time program. So what we want for you, dear listener, is to get in touch with me on, on Twitter, at Thomas J. Rennie, at Week in the Tackle on Twitter as well. Get in touch with Dunny uh, by various ways, Brian Dunseth on Instagram, to at SiriusXMFC, various ways. We'll put it in the bio how you get in touch with us. Mm-hmm. Um, send us some questions. We're going to do some question time shows. We're going to record in a couple of weeks, and we're going to release them over the summer. Uh, we're going to have a general discussion about the football, and that's kind of what the show has become, really, not a kind of review show or preview show in general. We have a couple of topics. We like to tackle them. They usually are inspired by something that happened in the past week. It's a really good name for a podcast. That We should stick with that. Uh, so send your questions in. Um, keep them coming in. We'll do a couple of appeals on social media as well, and we'll answer your questions on our question time programs uh, that we're going to release across the end of June and start of July. Right. Uh, to this weekend in our Week in the Tackle Predicts the Weekend uh, show, we do one banker, one thing you can absolutely bank on happening at the weekend, then one team or individual or whomever is going to totally shank it, which is essentially a huge balls up, uh, knocking your ball into the rough if you, you like your, your golfing terminology. Uh, so, Dunny, what's your banker for this weekend? What's going to definitely happen and why do you think it? Yeah, it's going to be a Sunday afternoon at the Etihad. Manchester City is going to mimic the scoreline that they just had uh, on Wednesday afternoon against Real Madrid. It's going to be a 4-0 win and it's going to be Erling Holland smashing Chelsea Football Club. Because guess what? Nothing to play for for Chelsea. They, they, they've been this season months ago, as much as they talk about the pride and they talk about we're doing it for the crest and we're playing for the fans. Uh, no, that's just not has not been the case at all. So very intrigued to see how the end of the season is for Chelsea Football Club, because here's the reality. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't think they know what's going to happen. We certainly understand that Mauricio Pochettino is going to have his say. And he's probably going to want an influx of at least two to three players to strengthen positionally what this squad needs to look like. Now, the number nine situation, right? Romelu Lukaku comes back potentially. You've got Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang potentially leaving. You've got Brozier recovering from the ACL. And you still have to figure out what the psychology of the system looks like and who is going to effectively be pushed out the door. Oh, by the way, Maybe even some of the players that he does want is sitting on 18 months to a year left on their contract. And what potentially does that look like? Does he maybe rubber stamp a new deal for a couple of players? <coughs> Christian Pulisic. Um, so this is a game where I don't think there's much to play for. And I know for Manchester City, the gauntlet has been thrown down months ago. And now it is clear and obvious their intent. It is the treble. It is on. And another opportunity for them to put their stamp on the Premier League title. I love the idea of Maurizio Pochettino going into that first meeting with Todd Bowley when he's confirmed as Chelsea manager, which could be any day now. And he says, Todd, I want maybe three or four players. Can you Mm. get me these three or four players? And Todd says, 
500 players? Yeah, I can get 500 <laughs> players for you. I saw a guy at the bus stop today. I just gave him seven million pounds to be our new right back. His name is Billy Bob or something. Here he is right now. And Maurizio's like, no, Todd, Todd, you've done this. You've made this error. Can I be in charge of transfers? And Todd mm. says, transfers? I can make lots of transfers. I'll transfer you right now. Oh, look, here's Tommy Tuckleback. Here's his hat. I just bought it for 600 million pounds. I'm going to put it in the Chelsea Museum. On and on that sketch could go. But you, mm. you get the gist of that really funny sketch. Um, let me ask you about Man City in mm. this game. If results go their way this weekend, which would be a Nottingham Forest draw or victory over Arsenal on the Saturday, it's a game you can hear with TalkSports International team uh, on Premier League Live on Sirius XMFC if you're in the USA and in Canada, so make sure you join us. Um, then they'll be champions on Sunday, um, depending on their result um, against Chelsea and indeed what's happened, draw, loss, whatever, for, for Forest Arsenal, which might happen. Um, so they might lift the, the trophy after the game, which would mean our show gets extended a bit. So we, we pick up that trophy lift. Um, your, your view, you mentioned it there, the treble. I mean, we, we weren't together on Thursday's programme on Grumpy Pundits because you got let down by the travel. Um, I got sidetracked, of course, by the concept of the Sovereign Wealth Fund, and I'm not going to let that go because, you know, the quality of the squad is, is a massive difference and it's been a 15-year sports-washing project. Don't at me, those are facts. Uh, but what about Man City's performance against Real mm. Madrid? Talk to us a bit, Danny. Talk to our listeners a bit about the... Yeah. Certainly in that first half. If if you can separate, and I know it's difficult for a lot of people, the conversation behind the scenes of how this squad was built versus what we've seen. Um, and, and I know that we've gotten into it on a couple of different occasions because I, I have been not an advocate, but I, I have been an explainer of why I like how Man City has gone about their business with regards to the transfer window and the identification process of the players that they think can make their squad better and how early they get their business done. Um, I can certainly separate the two, uh, because I look at them in two different ventures, the business side versus the sporting side, but I know those two clash and they collide very prevalent, prevalently, um, in this conversation. If we're just talking football, we start with Pep Guardiola, you know, the, the, the havoc surrounding the conversation with Pep has always been not what he can do in the league, but what he has not done in champions league without Lionel Messi since departing Barcelona. That has been a tag that I think has been similar, although uh, drastically different, with Lionel Messi and lifting a World Cup trophy with Argentina. Um, when we talk about Pep Guardiola, there's no doubt that as time continues to go on, we will refer to him as one of the best managers of all time. That, that for me, is it, it's done. It, it's, it's, the ink is dried. Uh, but there has been question marks about tinkering, about adjustments, about the philosophy of the way he sees the game, the way he sets up his tactics, the little tweaks and nuances to the way he wants his team to play. Because it's not just about winning, it's about how he wins. I think that's what he wants to see. And even watching Kevin De Bruyne and Pep getting that kind of verbal spat for a second on the field where they're barking at each other, it just shows you the intensity of what they're trying to accomplish and knowing that they're so close, especially after being knocked out on a couple of different occasions and in circumstances where you felt like they've either blown it, the manager has ruined it, or the players have been injured that were really the difference makers to catapult them to the trophy. That first, that first 45 minutes, uh, I, I think, will be a reference point um, in the future for some of the best football that we've seen played in the continent. Um, I, I just think they were so superb there. And I, and I know I was listening to all the Inter Milan fans, and they said, well, you're not going to have the chance to play this way against us because defensively we won't allow it. Uh, uh, they were just too wide open, Real Madrid. Uh, no, no one's stopping this team with that, that full throttle movement with possession, without the ball spacing, understanding it was extraordinary. That was honestly some of the best. And I know it's hard to dissect and separate, but if you're just looking at it as the game, that's some of the best football we've ever seen. So I'm not trying to overhype it. I'm not trying to undersell it. From my perspective, and this is coming from a Manchester United fan, that is some of the best football that I've ever seen played. So if they can continue to do what they did, um, I think to your point on uh, on Tuesday's Week in the Tackle, you, you almost hope for them to win the Champions League trophy, that their focus can wane. Um, that the intensity levels will drop and that Pep Guardiola will depart if you are not a Man City fan because 
if this is what we're looking for, if this is what we're looking at, God help us all because no one's touching this team. Yeah, I fully agree. I think that the Champions League is there to be won. The title will be won by the end of this weekend and the FA Cup against Man United. Oh, shame it wasn't Brighton. Um, but look, we, I'm not going to do it right now because I think people have heard me talk about it before, but I am not going to stop talking about the, the Sovereign Wealth Fund element of it. And I think it was a really interesting game in terms of a changing of the guard from the old money who have done whatever they can to take the cash off literally everyone else in football to expand the Champions League in a way that essentially Real Madrid, who will always qualify for that competition, um, they play more games and make more money. That's why the Champions League is what it is now, because of the power of Real Madrid and Barcelona and those old money clubs. They were able to expand the Champions League in their favour. So A, they would always qualify. B, they would always have games. And C, they could make sure to always have a financial disparity between them and, and those below them. So I'm not here defending Real Madrid and the old guard. You know, f*** them as well. Sorry, Tim. So... You know, I just wish they were usurped by stronger regulation and the concept of egalitarianism and competition as opposed to the necessity for a sovereign wealth fund and another sovereign wealth fund to compete at the very top and and, and, exp and exploit the market and give monstrous wages to sign both Erling Haaland and Jack Grealish in the same team for a combined cost of 150 million and God knows what in wages. But anyway, there we are. Um, what is going to happen this weekend for me? A banker is that Big Sam leads, leads, leads. Mm. I'm going to win at West Ham United. Why do I feel that? We are recording before the, the Conference League game. I hope West Ham have won. Um, if they haven't, they've still been in Holland playing a game the entire season has been built around. So if they've been beaten by a better footballing team, which AZ Alkmaar are, um, because West Ham will rely, as they always do, on physicality and corners. And if they have gone through, their focus, quite rightly, will be on their first European final since the 1970s and maybe winning their first silverware since 1980. If they've lost... They've already lost 19 games this season, West Ham. Over 50% of their fixtures have ended in defeat. And that was when something mattered. Um, this one doesn't particularly matter. The only way they go down now is Leeds win 6-0 at London Stadium to overturn that goal difference swing. Or they beat West Ham 2-0 and then beat Spurs 8-0 and West Ham lose both games. The, the odds are pretty, pretty small of that happening. So I think Leeds United, I was very impressed by the way they were organised defensively against Newcastle last week. Big Sam has come in and had an impact in the 10, 12 days he's been able to train with them. I think as a short-term meet-the-targets guy, he has clearly got the, the players reacting to his brief. It didn't happen at other clubs. It is happening at this club. It didn't happen at West Brom. It is happening at Leeds United. And I think if they can play with intensity, I'd certainly bring Brendan Aronson into the team. If they can get 90 minutes out of two stone overweight Weston McKenney, like it did last week, I think there's a real chance here for Leeds to go to a West Ham team who have been so indifferent and get the three points that will make the last day very interesting indeed. Mm -hmm. And it's worth noting too, I wouldn't be that confident of Everton winning at Wolves as well, making all of that Real interesting. So my banker is a big Sam Cheshire cat hippo head grin at the end of Sunday's game, which I'll be attending. And I don't know why. Um, don't he give us a shanker for the weekend? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the opposite of what you just said at the end of that conversation about West Ham. I'm actually going to say that Everton is going to win at Wolves. Wolves will be my shanker this weekend because they are safe. They are sitting on 40 points. And Everton, especially with all this conversation about 777 buying the club in the last 24 hours from Mo Shiri. You're, you're welcome, Everton fans. I don't know if that's a welcome, but you're welcome. Uh, I just think the intensity and the understanding and knowing that they are just a point clear of relegation right now with Wolves' combination of knowing that they are safe could lead to a couple wonky results. And Sean Deutsch, oh Deutsche, corner kicks and babe tests. Uh, it's a great opportunity for them to apply even more pressure on your beloved Cheshire Cat, Big Sam, and Leeds United against West Ham. So I'm going to say Wolves shank it at home. One no loss against Everton. Uh, it's a tough one for my shanker this week. I like that a lot, and I can see it happening. Um, but my shanker is going to be, I think, on Sunday, I'm going to take a shanker. Brighton and Hove Albion. I, I don't mm. know why I fancy this. I don't know why. But when Brighton have played the good teams this year, amazing against Man United. We wax lyrical about that for ages and ages and ages and ages. Um, when they beat Arsenal last weekend, the Monday show, Tuesday show was all about how good that was. But 
when they played the rubbish teams at home, I don't know. Something's been missing and Southampton are down, right? Mm, There's yep. nobody in the world that's going to predict this result. And if it comes back to bite me, so what? Uh, this is one of those ones that I look at it from now a couple of days out and it just screams Shay Adams 1-0. I don't know why. I don't know why. But if they do it, that would mean Brighton don't get European football. And I'd love to see Brighton in European football because A, it would mean more games for Brighton. So maybe next year West Ham might finally beat them. But B, as Danny Welbeck mentioned to us on, on Grumpy Pundits on, on Tuesday's programme, it would be an incredible achievement for a, a side that have never, a club that have never been in Europe. And when I lived in Brighton in Falmer at Sussex University, they played at the With Dean Stadium, which we actually used as our athletics track. And that was the stadium they were actually playing in. Yeah. And now they're at the Amex near near my old campus. So um, I want them to do it. But if I was a Brighton fan, I would be pooping myself like a giant seagull flying over the pier uh, going into this game because it screams, we're going to win. We're definitely going to win. We have to win. Oh, we've lost. So I'm going out on a wild limb. I'm certainly not putting money on it. But Southampton uh, are going to make Brighton hank it. Uh, this weekend. Find out what happened and we'll review it next week if we think it's interesting on Tuesday's Week in the Tackle podcast. That has been Brian Dunny Dunseth. I've been Tom Rennie. Tim Horsey produced the programme. Subscribe right now if you're watching on YouTube to wherever you get your podcast. And if you're listening on a podcast, watch us on YouTube. We'll see you next time.